Hey friends all over the world, I want to share a message with you about narcissism and I want to expose the spirit of narcissism. Now a lot of you have seen this, you've dealt with this, but you may not exactly know what it is and so I'm going to kind of identify it for you and share it with you so that you'll understand and some of you are going to be able to really have a better better understanding of what's been going on and the and the kind of things you've been dealing with and the kind of people that you've been dealing with. And let me say this, a lot of folks are talking about the last days, right? We talk about the last days, living in the last days and all that kind of stuff. Well, let me share something with you that you probably never thought about. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. Watch this. Hear me, hear me carefully on this. You got to listen to what I'm about to tell you because it's going to set a lot of people free. This is going to set people free today. 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. He says, in the last days, perilous times will come. Hear this. And then he says the very next verse, the very next verse, he says, for men will be lovers of themselves. Men will be lovers of themselves. One of the main signs of the times is not a vaccine. It's not birds falling from the sky. It's not comets hitting the ground. One of the main signs that we're living in the last days is narcissism that there will be a narcissistic spirit in the earth and that people will battle or will yield to a spirit of narcissism. Now hear this, there's a difference between being, watch this, between loving yourself and being in love with yourself. There's a difference between loving yourself. Everybody should love themselves. We should all love ourselves. As children of God made in his image, we should love ourselves, but there's a difference between being between loving yourself and being in love with yourself. And the narcissist or the spirit of narcissism is a spirit of self infatuation. That the, the, the narcissist is in love with themselves. Now you need to hear me. Hear me, hear me clearly. And I want you to hopefully share this because somebody needs to understand what's happening. The spirit of narcissism. And when we talk about narcissism, we're talking about a number of things. You know, psychologically speaking, a narcissist is someone that really has a personality disorder. It's, 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 uh, they can actually be diagnosed as a narcissist because they, they have not developed the capacity to identify value outside of themselves or to separate or distinguish between a material possession, for example, and self. You know, the narcissist has fragmentation in their soul. They usually have dealt with a lot of trauma. Uh, even from a young age, they've, they've been abused. They've been, uh, they felt abandoned at some point. But they at some point, and usually even in their early formative years, childhood, childhood, even early, early, you know, even you're talking about before adolescence, the narcissist uh, begins to develop a temperament that is extremely toxic. But I'm not just dealing with that. I'm dealing with the spirit of narcissism. There is a spirit of narcissism in our culture. There is a spirit of narcissism that has promoted self-infatuation, self-aggrandizement, self-worship. And I want to give you a couple things that you need to understand and look out for because this spirit is deeply entrenched in our culture. It's deeply entrenched in, in social media. It's deeply entrenched in the way we see things. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Recently, there was a guy, a, a, a popular social media guy, who talked about relationships and stuff like that. 
And this guy had a video with his spouse, you know, coming out and confessing a lot of the stuff that had been going on with them and, and a lot of accusations against them and, and the truth of those accusations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like a, you know, a confession video. Then he makes another video commenting about himself in third person as a, as a, as a bystander looking at himself. Now, now whether this is a, is a, like a, a, a gimmick, you know, or some sort of ploy to sell books or publicity stunt is irrelevant. What is more relevant is the fact that this is an example of the narcissistic spirit that has entered into our society and even into the church. And I'm going to deal with a couple of things now and I'm going to let you go. So the first thing you have to understand is that the narcissist lacks empathy. They cannot empathize with others. And that's why when you're dealing with a spirit of narcissism, the person cannot acknowledge the effects of their behavior on others. They can't recognize how what they do hurt you or has hurt others because they are so absorbed with themselves. They can't see, they can't even see beyond self. They don't, they lack basic empathy. They don't know how you could be crying. You could be crying. You could be, you could be sitting there agonizing, bleeding on the ground, and the narcissist cannot identify with your pain. They can't identify, they can't identify with your suffering because the only thing they're concerned about is themselves. The narcissist cannot apologize. Now, hear this. They can say, I'm sorry, but it's not genuine. It's not real because, because they are not sorry for what they've done to you or for what they've done to anybody. They lack the ability to feel any real sorrow except it's sorrow that affects them. So they could be sorry that they got caught or sorry that what they, what, 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 what they've done have damaged their image or, or damaged the fact that they can no longer get what they want from you, but they, they cannot apologize. They can't even acknowledge that they're wrong. They can't acknowledge wrongdoing. Let me show you what another thing with narcissism. Narcissism is responsible for blame shifting. The narcissist blame shift. It's always someone else's fault. It's never their fault. It's never what they did wrong. It's, it's never what they did wrong. It's always what someone else did to me. And when you confront their behavior, right? When you confront this behavior, what happens is that it actually becomes a cycle of what we call gaslighting. And gaslighting means that the person creates such a mental and verbal diversion that you leave away actually feeling guilty that you confronted them. You feel guilty that you even confront. You know what? Now that I think about it, I'm sorry for even confronting you about that. I know you stole. I know you stole from me, but you know what? I'm sorry I said something about you stealing from me. I didn't know it was going to upset you like that. That, that is a form of gaslighting and projecting that is so deviant and diabolical that, that if you continue to interact with this, it actually causes you to lose your mind. They, let me tell you something. The spirit of narcissism causes people around this spirit to actually lose their mind. They actually can no longer think clearly anymore because they think, am I going crazy? Am I, am I wrong? Did I, did, am I seeing things wrong? And it's not that you're seeing things wrong. You're dealing with a spirit of narcissism that is so manipulative and so deceitful and so cunning. And it is a demon. It is a demon. It is manipulation. It is control. It's witchcraft. And, and what happens is that this witchcraft spirit of narcissism has entered into our culture, the fabric of our culture, the fabric of the church. Can't, 
can't repent. It cannot repent because it refuses to acknowledge any wrongdoing. It, it is incapable of repentance. And I'm telling you, we need to be careful of this because it's not just the textbook narcissist that you have to be careful of. We have to be mindful and, wa and watchful of the spirit of narcissism in the culture. And this spirit of narcissism is the spirit of self-worship. Worship leaders have to watch this because it's the, it's the Luciferian spirit. Lucifer was a narcissist. He was so concerned with his own beauty. He was so infatuated with himself that he literally said, I'm the best thing since sliced bread. It's all about me. And that's why we have a worship culture in the church that's all about self-aggrandizement. It's about self-worship. It's about self-exaltation. It's about how I look. And, and this is what you'll see. The, the, the narcissist is always taking pictures of themselves. Like narcissistic worship leaders, you'll never see anybody in worship. It's always them taking pictures of, of them lifting their hands and them and them singing. And hey, catch this picture of me while I really worship the Lord. And it's always conjured and concocted. It's always, they, they, they always have to be at the center of everything. And this is a demon. And let me tell you something else. Hear me. This is a warning. It doesn't matter how much you sow into a narcissist. It doesn't matter how much you give them. They will never have gratitude. They will never be grateful. They will never thank you. They will never acknowledge you because they don't have the capacity to acknowledge anyone else that has been instrumental on their journey. They lie. They deceive. They, they distort reality. In fact, when they tell stories, they tell it in such a way that manipulates the truth. And they always have a sob story. So they're going to tell you, well, I left my last church because, because the pastor didn't understand my gifting and they didn't realize that I was just, and they just, and what happens is that you begin to believe the sob story. You believe the rhetoric, but it's a lie. It never happened that way. It's a lie. It's, there's nothing true about what they're saying. It's all a lie. And they are pathological liars. And the problem with this is that many people with a spirit of narcissism are extremely gifted. They're extremely charismatic. They're extremely talented. People are drawn to them. But you are just a stepping stone to get to where they're trying to go. They will step on you. They will, they will use you. They will use you. And here you are, you're crying, you're upset. Stop being upset. You're dealing with a demon. You're not dealing with a person. You're dealing with a demon spirit. And I'm telling you, this thing has demonized so many people and it's after our culture. It's after the church. We have, we have narcissists in leadership. We, not only in governmental need, leadership, we have narcissists in church leadership. We have narcissists on social media. It's, it's, it's a spirit. And the only way to address this spirit is to confront it, to confront it in us and to confront it in others. The, the spirit of narcissism always conjures victimhood. There was a victim. It's my mama's fault. It's my dad's fault. It's, it's my aunt's fault. It's how I was raised. It's because I was molested. It's because of this. It's because of that. There's always a justification because they are eternal victims, perpetual victims. You did this to me. That's why I did this.
So it's never, well, well, he cheated because he has a problem. He has an addiction. He, he deals with insecurity. He's broken, etc. Or he has a demon of lust. It's always, well, my wife wasn't giving me what I needed. If you were there for me, I wouldn't have needed to step out. That's a narcissist. And ladies, let me tell you something. This spirit has become so prevalent in men, in men now, that, that many women are dating and marrying narcissistic men who are like babies. And in fact, you have what's called the Oedipus complex. You are raising your own son. You're marrying your son. It's like a spiritually incestuous relationship where you're marrying the man who should be leading you. You're the one leading him. And then we justify it through our culture by saying, well, you know, the woman's the prayer warrior. No, no, you're not. The man should be the spiritual head and leader of your home. And, and just because, just because he has abs and a nice smile doesn't mean he's worth marrying. And a lot of you are messed up women because you're marrying men who are so self-absorbed. They're even prettier than you. They stay in the mirror longer than you do. And then you wonder why after you get pregnant, he's not even thinking about you anymore. He's out with his friends and he's doing this. And you're like, what happened to me? What happened to you is you married somebody who had a spirit of narcissism. Many men marry, marry narcissistic women who are so Jezebelic in nature that they're so manipulative. And what they do, everybody's the enemy. Everybody's the enemy. Your mom is the enemy and your sister is the enemy. And, 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 and your sister them don't like me and your mom doesn't like me and your dad doesn't like me. And they isolate you from every relationship in your life. Every valuable relationship with your life, they take you out of your church, take you away from your pastor, take you away from your friends. And the key is to keep you enslaved to them so that they can manipulate you. So, so, so what happens is that many men marry this. I've seen pastors with a narcissistic wife uh, uh, with, with a Jezebel spirit and basically she's destroying the ministry because it's all about her. She has to be seen. She's competing with her husband for power, for attention, for affection, for fame. And anyone who gets near her husband is a threat to her because she has to have his full attention and energy at all times. This is a demon. So the thing about it is when you're dealing with this demon, there's two things you can do. You can confront the demonic power. You can confront the demonic power. You can say, you know what? I take authority over this spirit. And then you can put up boundaries that deny this spirit access to your peace of mind. The narcissist hates boundaries because boundaries keep them from having control. The best defense against the spirit of narcissism is boundaries. And then not only that, watch this, sometimes, and I don't, I don't advocate divorce. I don't advocate divorce. I don't believe if you're married that you should just divorce someone. I'm not an advocate for divorce. But I will say this. Let's say, let's say marriage aside. The best thing you can give a narcissist is the gift of goodbye. Sometimes the best thing you can give a narcissist is the gift of goodbye. The gift of goodbye. So you know what? I can't communicate with you anymore. I can't speak with you anymore. I can't talk to you anymore. This is oh, this relationship is over. Again, I'm talking about marriage aside because I'm not an advocate for divorce. But in many times, in many situations, the best thing you can do is deny access and grant them the gift of goodbye. The gift of goodbye. And recognize that you're dealing with a demon. 
This is one of the signs of the last days. The Bible says that in the last days, people will be in love with themselves. They'll be heady. They'll be high-minded, boastful. They'll be traitors. They'll be disloyal. And it is born out of this self-conceit, this narcissistic spirit of pride. And if, you, if you're under this, you need to break the mind control that you're under. You're under the spirit of mind control and, and, and manipulation. And, and my God, I see this. I've seen it in ministry. I've, I've seen it recently. I've seen it so many times. Women following after narcissistic men. And he can't lead you anywhere. He can't lead you anywhere. He won't serve you. He won't, he won't lead you. He won't speak into your life. It's all about him. And if you follow him, you're following him into destruction. Men uh, are getting into relationship with narcissistic women who will destroy their future, their careers, their ministries. We're seeing it in the media right now. Men walking away from their families, walking away from kingdoms because of a narcissist that they're in relationships with. This is a demon. This is the thing behind cancel culture. Listen, it's just like the woman that went to McDonald's and said, you know what? I'm suing McDonald's because I'm fat. That's what we have in our culture today. I'm going to sue McDonald's because I'm overweight. You did this to me, Golden Arches. You made me fat. If it weren't for your french fries, if it weren't for those delicious, crispy french fries in that, in that red box, I would not be 568 pounds. You did this to me, McDonald's. McDonald's, this is you. Therefore, we need to cancel you. Close every McDonald's in the United States. Close every McDonald's. And don't you see that this is the spirit behind cancel culture? This is the spirit behind cancel culture. If you offend me, you need to be destroyed. I'm going to destroy you because you offended me. I don't care what you did in the, in the, the third, last 30 years of your career. If you make me mad, I'm going to make you pay hell. And they will lie. They will deceive, they will manipulate, they will gossip, they will slander. They will do whatever it takes to get what they want. You need to pray. And if you're dealing with somebody like this, pray for them to have a radical encounter with Jesus. Cast this spirit out of people. And usually narcissism, narcissism is not just one spirit. It's like a legion of demons inside someone. A person with a spirit of narcissism has a spirit of legion. There's a bunch of demons compacted and compounded in them that have actually infiltrated their personality. And so what you have to pray for is for the, the breaking of the demonic soul ties, the demonic legion, that the Lord would break up that legion in them and that they would literally have a radical encounter that would restore their soul. because it's wounded. The soul is wounded and the soul needs to be healed. The narcissist can't hear from God because anytime the voice of God disagrees with the voice of self, they will default to the voice of self. I'm helping you tonight. One of the first things there has to do has to be is repentance and the falling out of agreement with lies. I want you to really tell me what you think about this. I want you to comment in the comment section. Tell me your thoughts about this and let's have a discussion. Let's talk about it. God bless.